Hello everyone, I'm going to discuss the answers to the quiz I posted on Instagram yesterday. The questions are based on my previous video on asthma. If you haven't watched it yet, please check it out. Question number one. Which muscarinic receptor antagonist is short-acting? Option A, ipratropium. Option B, tyotropium. The correct answer is option A, ipratropium. I mentioned a trick to remember this in my previous video. Since the arrow to I is shorter than the arrow to T, we can remember that ipratropium is short-acting and tyotropium is long-acting. Question number two. Which of the following drugs inhibits the formation of leukotriene? Option A, Montelukast. Option B, Zafirlukast. Option C, Xylutin. Option D, Adenosine. The correct answer is Xylutin. So when you hear leukotriene, you should always think of Montelukast, Zafirlukast and Xylutin. Since Montelukast and Zafirlukast have the letter A, you can use it to recall that they are both leukotriene receptor antagonists. Xylutin, on the other hand, works by inhibiting the formation of leukotriene. Adenosine is not used in asthma as it increases bronchoconstriction. Question number 3. Which of the following increases bronchoconstriction? A. Sympathetic tone B. Parasympathetic tone C. None of the above The correct answer to this question is parasympathetic. Let's look at the bronchus. CAMP is required to dilate the bronchus. Activation of beta-2 receptors increases CAMP and hence produces bronchodilation. So we can understand that the sympathetic nervous system dilates the bronchi. The parasympathetic nervous system constricts the airway. This is why we use muscarinic receptor blockers for treating patients with asthma. Question number 4. Your patient with asthma has high levels of IgE. In order to bring the IgE levels down, which one of the following do you think is the most appropriate? Option A, Theophylline. Option B, Omalizumab. Option C, Ipratropium. Asthma has two processes that are going on. Number one is bronchoconstriction. Number two is airway secretion and inflammation. Ipratropium works by blocking muscarinic receptors, hence preventing bronchoconstriction. Theophylline prevents the breakdown of CAMP, hence causes bronchodilation. Omalizumab works by interfering with the second mechanism. It is a monoclonal antibody which binds to IgE. It prevents IgE from binding to mast cells and hence prevents degranulation. Degranulation is one of the main processes involved in inflammation of the airways. So, patients with asthma whose symptoms and IgE levels remain high despite the use of inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta-2 agonists should be treated with omalizumab. Question number 5. Which of the following is a long-acting beta-2 receptor agonist? Option A, albuterol. Option B, salbutamol. Option C, salmeterol. When I was studying for the USMLE Step 1, these three drugs confused me a lot, so I found a way to remember them. Since sal is longer than al, we can remember that albuterol is short-acting and salmeterol is long-acting. Salbutamol is another name for albuterol. You can remember this by noticing that both of them have A-L-B-U-T in their name. Now, we have come to the end of this video. I hope that solving questions has given you a better understanding of this topic. 
I will soon be posting a video on my telemedicine rotation at Rush University Medical Center. So hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss it and subscribe for more med videos, quizzes, study tips and med school experiences. Thank you.